friends, we gather here tonight in somewhat not very pleasant situation. We have what we have been reading as imminent eruption of Mount Agung. The last time it erupted was in 1963, I guess. 63, right? And uh, it was quite a lot of devastation. But of course now with the modern technology and uh, also the villagers have been cooperating. More than 40,000 villagers are already in the camps and but there are still 30,000 plus villagers who have to move out from the danger zone. Of course it is not going to be very heavy on Bali as an island but in the 12 to 19 kilometers radius from from Mount Agung. It's going to be quite some damage because the harvest, everything will be affected. And when something like this happens, you know, the whole world is affected. The last time, what do you call it? The what? Dust, what do you call it? The, the sand, what do you call it? Yeah, ash. The ash went around the world for three times, you know. So Krakatau was seven, eight times. The ash went around the world for seven, eight times. You know. So it is going to affect the whole planet. So we are not alone. We are not alone. And this is not a time to be fearful. This is a time to, to face your fears, to face your demons, to face our demons. You know. If you have to die, we have to die. Nobody can save us. But this is a time to also share what little you have. So our friends have been giving meditation from this afternoon, this morning actually. They visited two camps and it will be ongoing program. Sunday we are going to visit and thereafter it will be a weekly program. As long as they require because from our past experience in Yogyakarta and I've got two of our friends from Yogyakarta when Mount Marapi erupted. I think you were giving program to six months, I think, yeah? Six months? Three months. For three months they were giving meditation programs, the camps, because the most affected ones are the children. You give them something to draw and they'll draw volcano. And this went on for one, two months and finally, you know, with meditation and with many of the therapies, finally they could draw something else beside volcano, you know. So it's, it's uh, heavy on the, on the mind of the children. So that's what we are trying to do. But beside that, this is a time to do self, some self-introspection. This planet is one organism. Whatever happens in any part of the world, we all are affected, even economy-wise. Something happens to the economy of some country somewhere, we all are affected. There is a refugee problem and the whole world is affected. Any problem, terrorism, the whole world is affected. Of course, global warming, climate change, everybody is affected. So we are not alone, we are not alone. We are together in it. It's a time to do some self-introspection. Of course, I was saying this afternoon somebody was interviewing me, a journalist, and I was telling her the same thing. It's like you catch cold, you know. You cannot avoid it. From time to time, you catch cold. Even though you are very careful, sometimes you can still catch cold, you can get flu, you can cough. It's natural. Similarly, if you consider this whole planet as one organism, eruption and uh, floods, all these are natural. They happen. But let me also tell you something. I have met with some people who have been declared having cancer. Medically, they say you won't live more than one year six months, and they are still living for 10 years. And then there are people 
they are told you are suffering from cancer, within one year they die. The situation may not be that bad as the person who has been living for 10 years, 12 years now, and he is going around the world, he is, he is traveling, he doesn't even care so much for the medicines, he's taking some vitamin supplements and he has changed the whole lifestyle. He has changed the whole lifestyle. So, yes, these things are natural, but you cannot altogether prevent them maybe, but you can minimize the, the hazard, you can minimize the damage. And this is the time to do some self-introspection and what we call in Sanskrit prayashit. Now prayashit has been interpreted as repentance, but repentance is not something like you do some confession of your sins and that's it. You know. Prayashit in Sanskrit is much more than repentance. Prayashit is a resolution that I am not going to repeat the same mistake. So it is not merely, oh, I repent for my mistakes then, that's it. We have to do some prayaschit, we have to do some self-introspection. Why are we causing this kind of eruption in less than 50, 50 plus years? We are having the second time now. <laughs>